The blaring of the fire alarm woke me from my sleep. I swore loudly as I dragged myself out of bed. The alarm had been malfunctioning since early evening, and this was the third time it had gone off since I had decided to go to bed for the evening. Each time I had checked everywhere for any sign of a fire, and each time I had found nothing, the landlord would not come to fix the problem until the next day, and I was not willing to take the risk of taking out the alarms, so it was that I decided to put on my housecoat, grab a blanket, and head out to sleep in my car for the night. Perhaps this was not the best idea. Perhaps I should have gone to a hotel to gone to stay with a friend. However, I was exhausted both from lack of sleep and the previous day's work, and my brain was not really working at full capacity. As such, I decided to sleep in my car. If I had known what would happen, I would probably have just tried to suck it up and sleep through the fire alarms. Needless to say, trying to sleep in my car was no fun. It was hard to find a comfortable sleeping position. And even with my pajamas, my housecoat, and the blanket, it was cold. I am pretty certain that I spent at least two hours uncomfortably laying in the driver's seat, trying to sleep and getting increasingly frustrated with my inability to do so. At that moment, it started to rain. It had been overcast for most of the previous day, and the forecast had been for overnight showers, so I suppose I should not have been surprised. Nevertheless, it came as a shock when I saw the flash of lightning, and about 20 seconds later, heard the thunder, followed by the tap, tap, tapping of raindrops on the roof of my car and on the windows. The already cold weather got a little bit colder, and I contemplated going back inside, but then I heard the distant sound of my fire alarm, once again going off for several seconds before stopping, and decided not to do so, and so I remained where I was, lying in the driver's seat of my car, a decidedly uncomfortable position, clutching my blanket to myself, and trying in vain to escape into unconsciousness, to ignore the discomfort of my impromptu bed, the discomfort of the cold, the sounds of the thunder, and the tapping of the rain, and deep down inside, I felt, though trying to suppress it, the slight gnawing sensation of fear, a deep buried, primal fear of the storm outside, the sort of fear that most can ignore, sheltered behind walls and doors when the bad weather comes out, but from which I had only the limited protection of the metal and glass box, which I normally used for transportation, but which had now become my shelter. It was at that moment that I heard another tapping. At first, I could not distinguish it clearly from the raindrops, but eventually, I started to tell it apart. A light tapping, regular and persistent, coming in a sequence of three, then a pause, then another sequence of three, then another pause, then another sequence of three, and so on. At first, I tried to convince myself that it was nothing, just the rain. After a time, however, I could no longer convince myself of anything other than that somebody must be on the other side. Part of me thought that perhaps it was somebody who needed help, or maybe someone who had noticed me, and had gotten worried. I thought for a moment that perhaps I should look and see if one of these things was the case. However, the other voice in my head, the frightened one, was stronger and overruled in my thoughts. I wondered if perhaps it was a burglar or someone on drugs who might attack me, and deep down inside, I feared something else. The persistence, the fact that there had been no interruption to the regularity of the tapping, the fact that nobody had called out my name, possibly something else, all made me wonder what could be on the other side of the glass. While the rational part of my mind told me that it was just a person or, more likely, a tree branch being blown by the wind or some such thing, some part of me, buried deep in my mind, feared the source of the tapping, feared that it might be something far worse than human, and did not dare to look. But I did look, eventually, the tapping just would not stop, and the worry would just not go away. I do not know how long, it felt like hours, but it was probably not more than 30 minutes, all while the rain kept coming down, the tension kept building, and building as the tapping would not let up, and I clutched my blanket to myself like a frightened child. In the end, it was simply too much, and I uncovered my face and stared through the driver's side window. What stared back at me was not human. A face, white as paper, oval-shaped and far wider near the top. The entire top part of the face was dominated by two circular, lidless eyes, solid silver glinting in the streetlight save for small black pupils rimmed by red irises, no nose and a wide mouth stretching in a grin from one pointed, bat-like ear to the other, revealing what must have been more than a hundred needle teeth. There was a strange quality about the apparition, which I do not know how to properly describe, something insubstantial, as if it were a reflection in a pond, except for the eyes, 
Those were solid, silver discs with black pinpricks staring at me with hatred, and nothing can convince me that they were not real. As I stared at the creature, stiff with terror, the pale white fist that it had raised to knock once more stopped, and opened slowly as the grin on its face grew even wider. Moved by a sudden realization of how much this thing resembled a reflection, I turned suddenly to face the passenger side, fearing that it might be in the car. Noticing that nothing was there, I breathed a sigh of relief, turning back to face the driver's side window, only to see that the creature was on the other side of the glass in the car with me. I did not have time to scream before it was upon me, one hand covering my face, claws digging into the flesh of my cheeks, the other holding me down by my chest as its mouth filled with needle teeth opened wide, slowly approaching my neck. I had accepted, in those seconds, that I was about to die, when suddenly the force of the creature's hands bearing down on me seemed less solid, almost as if it were fading somehow. The expression in those terrible eyes which had been one of sadistic glee suddenly turned to one of frustrated rage, as the horrifying mouth, which had been slowly approaching my neck rushed in that direction, as if the creature were desperate to finish what it had started. The needle teeth were barely able to break the skin, however, before they faded along with the rest of the creature. After my attacker had vanished, I looked about, bewildered, wondering how I had suddenly survived this attack. I noticed in that moment that the rain was beginning to die down. Looking out of the window, I even perceived a few stars. I was not able to register anything else. However, before I fell into a deep, dreamless sleep, the sound of tapping on my driver's side window caused me to wake, screaming only to realize that it was my neighbor wondering if I was alright and why I was sleeping in my car. Tired from my poor night's sleep put relieved that this had apparently all been a dream. I lowered the window and explained to him the situation with my fire alarm. I was about to exit my vehicle and return indoors to get myself ready for work when my neighbor asked, what happened to your face and neck? Did someone attack you? I felt my spirits sink as I asked, what do you mean? You've got scratch marks on your face and neck, he answered. Looking into the rear view mirror, I noted with growing horror the puncture marks and scratches breaking the skin where the creature's claws had cut into my cheeks as it held a hand over my face and where its teeth had broken the skin on my neck. The proof that what had happened last night had not been a dream, that it had all been real. Struggling to come up with an answer, I simply mumbled something about having been fallen and scratched my face before returning indoors and calling in sick from work. There is not much more to say, really. My landlord showed up that day and fixed the fire alarm, which worked fine up until I moved eight months later. I am living in a new place now and doing all right. There are a few more things which I would like to say. However, I did some research about what had happened to me the day after this horrific experience to try and get some explanation. Most of the results which I got online were related to sleep paralysis and night terrors. And in truth, part of me believes that that is what happened to me that night. However, in my research, I came across two news articles. One was about a woman found dead in her car one morning seven years before my experience, having died the night before. Her throat had been torn open and a wild animal was suspected of being responsible even though her doors had all been locked and the windows were up. The front driver's side window was shattered, though police investigation suggested that it had been broken from the inside. The other story was from 12 years before my experience. This was about a man who was fatally attacked one night. He was found by a pedestrian running down the street, clutching his bleeding neck, then collapsed and died before he could say anything. The man was found to have run from his car, which was parked beside the road, and blood stains indicated that he had been attacked while seated in the driver's seat. Both attacks had taken place at night, during heavy rainstorms, while the individuals in question were alone. I will not provide their names out of respect for the deceased. Whatever attacked me that night, I think it can only manifest itself at dark and in heavy rains. I also think it meant to kill me, and that I only survived by chance. From the storm letting up just in time, I also firmly believe that it has killed before and intends to kill again. This is a warning to everyone to be careful. When alone at night in the rain, that is when it hunts. For my part, I rarely go out at night these days, and never when rain is forecast. I especially avoid driving. I furthermore have always shut my blinds when it has gotten dark or overcast ever since that night, and when it rains, 
and I hear the tapping of raindrops on my windows. I never look in their direction, especially when I hear a certain regular tapping that does not quite sound like rain. 